Recently, I made a video where I attempted to trivialize one of RuneScape's most iconic PVM challenges, the Fight Caves. With the help of some of the game's best defensive gear, I was able to turn this once iconic battle into a complete AFK snooze fest. Today, I am upping the ante and taking on the Inferno. Released in June of 2017, the Inferno remains one of the most difficult tests of PVM mastery in old school, rewarding victors with the elusive Infernal Cave. Unlike Inferno Legends Exact, Wooks, and former Jagex moderator Matt K, I am not a god tier PVMer who can just cruise through this challenge on pure skill alone. While I may not be able to AFK the Inferno in the same way that I did the Fight Caves, I think I can at least make it mindlessly easy. That means no one tick flicking, no advanced strategies, and as little supply usage as possible. While the fight cave monsters were pushovers and I could literally auto retaliate the waves while honing my skills in Super Mario 64, the inferno monsters would absolutely chew me up and spit me out if I tried the same tactics here, so I'm gonna need to take another approach. Success in the Inferno really comes down to your ability to recognize wave patterns and react quickly and decisively. The arena is also equipped with three pillars to help you navigate the various scenarios that you'll encounter. Top runners of the Inferno use these pillars in moderation and largely rely on prayer flicking to manage threats after they've determined which tick each mob is attacking on. That might work great for the pros, but I am far too dumb for that, so instead for my run, North Pillar just became my best friend. By throwing all proper tactics out the window and building my new home behind this lovely tower of rocks, I can reduce the Inferno waves from a skill-based multivariable monster management challenge down to how do I solve this single stack of monsters that I have managed to safe spot? Inevitably, mistakes are going to be made here, so let's talk about the keys to my strategy. This is the setup that I'll be going with. Arams will be perfect for my newbie tactics since its defense bonuses will be a bit more forgiving than Ancestral, while still offering solid magic accuracy. Justice here will act as a safeguard in a pinch, but I'll be starting each wave in magic gear to tackle the pillar eating nibblers, so the Elijah is my offhand of choice to help protect me between the time that I freeze the nibblers and when I retreat to my pillar. That's where my secret weapon comes in. The Tombs of Amask had introduced a plethora of powerful rewards to the game and among them was the light bearer. This ring doubles special attack regeneration rate, which means that when paired with a special attack weapon like the Ceridome and God Sword, I can gain access to unlimited HP and prayer regeneration with half of the wait time. This will hopefully allow me to progress deep into the Inferno before I have to dip into my supplies. And since I will be doing a fair bit of AFKing, why not also use a regen bracelet to double the speed of my hit points regeneration? Using these items in tandem should allow me to begin each wave with my stats repleted, giving me a bit of a buffer when I screw up. Let's jump into the run. The nibbler management strategy is going to stay the same throughout the waves. We're going to freeze them, hopefully take them out in one swoop, and then use my pillar here to safe spot the rest of the mobs. Because the nibblers will chip away at my precious pillars if left unattended, they will always be my number one priority. The first real nuisances of the inferno are the blobs. These guys attack attack with major range, but they'll always choose a style based on what you're currently praying. So if you throw a prey mage up, they'll attack with range and vice versa. Upon death, they also spawn three smaller minions, one of each combat style. All my homies hate blobs. The next inferno monster is the meleeer, and while he's not particularly dangerous, he does have the ability to dig underneath the arena and pop up in your safe spot. As long as we keep an eye on him at all times, he shouldn't pose too much of a threat. That brings us to wave 18, where the ranger is making his first appearance. Unlike the rangers of the fight caves, this guy packs a fat punch. With a max hit of 46 and the ability to also attack with melee, you better be ready with prey range whenever he's around, or at least be on the opposite side of the pillar. Okay, wave 35 here, and we have now reached the majors. Similar to the rangers, these magic frogs are significantly more threatening than their outdated counterparts, boasting a max hit of 70 and also having the ability to resurrect monsters that you've already eliminated during that wave. 
Granted, each major can only resurrect each monster once per wave, and they respawn with half HP, but this is going to make them a priority target, since dealing with each monster once is already more than enough for me. With those monsters out of the way, let's talk about the core strategy here. If you look very closely, you'll notice me standing behind the pillar, waiting for my spec to restore. As long as I can avoid taking too much damage between the time that the monsters spawn and getting everything safe spotted, I should should be able to avoid damage for the rest of the wave and then just pop out with my light bear and SGS combo to replete my HP and prayer for the next round. This is definitely not how Jagex intended for the Inferno to be done, but you know what? This might be the new meta. I should probably let the Inferno speedrun Discord know. As you might imagine, even with the Light Bearer, my pillar spec tactics are giving me a lot of downtime. And since you guys enjoyed my Mario 64 segment so much last time, today I am bringing you another classic. It's Mario Kart time! Okay, I've got two and a half minutes before my spec restores, let's see if that's enough time to finish a race on Koopa Troopa Beach. If you think the Inferno is stressful, just wait until you have to dodge banana peels while racing down the beach against a giant monkey at 90 miles per hour. Okay, let's check in on my Inferno progress. Yep, this is definitely hard. I may not be sprinting through my Inferno run, but I am zooming down this beach. Wait, are those the Reddit crabs? I can use this hole, right? Wait, no! Final stretch, just have to dodge the crabs! Ha <laughs> ha yes! Sit, Luigi! Real quick, I'm trying to reach 10k subs. If you could leave me a like and consider subscribing if you're enjoying, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Alright, I guess I should get back to the Inferno. Inferno waves really only start getting difficult at wave 50, since that's when majors and rangers begin to spawn together. I do not want to have to prayer flick both of those at the same time, so here's what I'm going to do. If possible, I'll use my pillar to safe spot either the major or the ranger. That way, I can camp just one prayer and one monster at a time. This is going to get more complicated when blobs and meleeers start getting thrown into the mix later on, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Depending on the wave spawn points, I may not be able to isolate the major or the ranger like I'd hope, and they could instead stack on top of each other. Thankfully, I have a newbie solution to this situation too. All I have to do is start on the center tile behind the pillar with run on, I pray against the second monster in the stack, and I click to attack it. This will pull me out, and as soon as I see my bow rays, I switch to praying against the front monster. From there, I can either continue switching or run back behind the pillar. Super low effort, super easy to learn, that is the name of the game today. Another low effort inferno tip for you, you can log out in between waves, and though your HP and run energy doesn't regenerate while the inferno is paused, your spec energy actually does. So if you do have to leave, you can set yourself up with a full spec bar for the next wave. Wave 60 here and I have still barely touched my supplies, I think it's safe to say that the light bearer, SGS, and regen bracelet are definitely pulling their weight here. And that is perfect since wave 60 plus can be insanely chaotic and I want as many supplies on hand as possible so that I can drown my inferno mistakes with brews if I need to. Okay, I think I can hit the melee from here. Uh, alright, um, let's go do waves 1 to 63 again. I am absolutely fine. I am back on wave 63 for another round of punishment. Let's see if I can squeeze my way through the Inferno's most difficult wave this time. That was not pretty by any means, but I did get the job done. Just a few waves left to go before Jad. I'm on the double major wave now, which means that I have reached the final normal wave of the Inferno. For this one, you really can just throw on Prey Mage, auto retaliate, and kick back. I'm gonna recline and enjoy this one. This is going to be a wrap on wave 66, and with that, I have successfully cheesed my way to Jad with the help of my light bearer, SGS, and probably the worst Inferno strategies you've ever seen. Now that I've proven that you really don't have to be good at PVM to squeeze through the Inferno waves, there is only one thing left to do. Let's seal the deal and get this Infernal cape. 
or you know, very possibly die again. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. If you can beat one Jad, you can beat three. It might look harder, but it's really the exact same thing, just with tighter timing. We have made it to the big one, just Zuck left to go, and while I would normally be very stressed out about this part, I have been getting harassed by a giant gorilla in a go-kart for the last hour, so this cannot be worse than that. Five and a half hours of aggressively bad Inferno tactics later, and I have finally gotten what I came for, but how'd I do? In my quest for this burnt pizza cape, I was able to push deep into the Inferno while barely touching my supplies, without using any advanced strategies, and relying primarily on the power of this ring to keep me afloat. If I were Jagex, I would probably feel a little bit cheated here, as the tactics that I used today were most definitely not what Mod Kieran had in mind when designing the Inferno. Let this be a lesson, if you ever think that the Inferno is out of your reach, just remember, if you just play dumb enough, you too can get yourself an Inferno cape. Or, you know, just learn the Inferno and do it the way it was intended. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing on your way out, and as always, thank you so much for watching.